Lethal wails on a random soldier while scolding to know what he's looking at. Oh my god, hello. Spotting this, Vegeta clenches his jaw at the sight that she's already acting up. He calls out to her, instructing she make her way to Ruba's group. But what? She thought they would get to choose their own groups. Going Super Saiyan and grabbing her by the hair. Oh shit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to watch more fan manga. Um, it's time to watch Dragon Ball Kakume, Kakuzume, whatever may, the fan manga thing. We're gonna see if this don't continues to cook. Last thing I think we saw, Goku was in jail. Uh, chat was saying immediately after the last video, for those that don't know, that, and most of you guys didn't take this as slander, good for you, that um, this is the um, origin of uh, trapped and betrayed ass fan mangas. This is the OG. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just what I was told. So I'm not going to necessarily dunk on it too much for doing these kind of things. Before we play the video, by the way, some of you were complaining about the color and you wanted no color. Yeah, chat wanted, wanted the opposite. opposite. So be in the streams at TSO underscore saves on Twitch and you may have these decisions. <laughs> Let's do it. Thinking the gang only has two years. They're going to have to get organized with everyone. Vegeta adds not only that, but everyone will have to set a goal and roll for themselves for the war. And by the way, uh, where's the killer? That Fuck! Guy. He has huge potential and could be very useful. He asks Bulma if she can go get him and his friends, all green and all orange, who, with an eye roll, reminds him they do have names. And for his own part, Vegeta will send Gohan, Goten, and Trunks to see Whis. With any luck, he should be able to bring out the best in him. Okay. Away, Piccolo does his usual routine. Routine of just sitting there with his eyes closed. As a mysterious stranger appears behind the Namekian, he inquires if he can help them. In space, Bulma chews out Jocko. She screeches to know what he means by I'm too busy. He needs to hurry up and get to Earth and stop being so selfish. Oh my god. Reluctantly, the Galactic Patrolman agrees as she hangs up the phone. Trying to save face with his comrade, he hollers. What? It's fine. She just wants me to go find someone. I can do that for a friend, right? Type shit. Though turning away, his other protests, he didn't say anything. Still ranting, Bulma swears that Jocko is such a slacker. Even when a war is about to break out, he tries to find a way to postpone what he's asked to do. Like seriously, oh. he can do that for a friend, right? Oh, friend, yeah. to the little one. Vegeta smirks that when she's angry, even the greatest of warriors can't stop her. Yeah. Heading outside to let her blow off some steam. She can still be heard as the door closes. She vows to- Look at W, Ve look at W dad Vegeta, man. Tear his eyes out. That darned latex coated alien. Glad to patrol her out. Just wait until she finds out that latex is actually just his bare skin. Oh. While Bola begins to fuss, Gohan calls out to the prince to joke. It sure sounds like there's a lot going on inside. Prompting Videl to approach him to tend to the crying baby, assuring Vegeta she'll take Why care of Why everybody Aki as shit in this joint? Why Vegeta huh, 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 in this joint? I'm not saying Vegeta don't got muscles already, but come on, bro. We ain't got to be stupid. Look at his arm. The Saiyan then calls out for Gohan, taking a seat next like, to him. Damn, like, damn, like Gohan Jack. Will he train what the or do his studies? And he intends to do both, actually. <laughs> they Vegeta should be, but that damn. Is indeed his decision. Vegeta fine. Yo, is that the second time or is the same person? Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up with the TSO women's liking Vegeta, man? What's going on? What's going on of all of all of them? I'm slandering. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Does Vegeta is Vegeta the the or man in terms of sex appeal? To, like, is that who it is? I thought it'd be like Trunks because he got the sword and shit. Or oh, I thought it'd be like Goku because that's who y'all know. It's fucking Vegeta. All along, that's who that's who the shorties in, in Dragon Ball sent for. Think so, hey chat. Now we know, bro. Bob is overrated. Now we know, bro. Now we know. You would like to propose? Yo, something. Bob, don't do nothing for you. How about training with Whis? Kakarot is currently doing his last training with him. Knowing the two of them, they'd be delighted to take him in. Clearly, our heroes are unaware of Goku's predicament. Either way, he also mentions Goten and Trunks have already told him they're in. Gohan regrets to inform he's pretty set on his idea of what to do during these two years, so he'll have to decline the invitation. By the way, for Goten and Trunks, his dad told him about a kind of hyperbolic time chamber. Like an idea Vegeta loves. He can accompany them himself. 
On Gohan's side, he inquires if he thinks Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien could be of any help. And if so, what could they do? It reminds me of McDonald's, and that's my favorite fast food. <laughs> yeah, chat, they're going to choose who they want, man. And if they want Vegeta, they're going to make anything work. <laughs> Your hairline reminds me of McDonald's. It's so dreamy. Ah! Oh! Can't win. We can't win. If a motherfucker like Tien, yo, I like that he always sees where I'm going. Oh! <laughs> oh Taking off his glasses God. and thinking a moment. Gohan thinks he knows just the thing. Moments okay. later, Gohan pierces through the sky, making his way to Krillin's house. Okay. Type shit. Hello. He finds I forgot Krillin fresh as hell in this verse. He touches down to say hello. Setting his daughter down, Krillin asks his old friend how he's doing. While he says he's doing just fine, he gets straight down to business. He questions if he knows where Yamcha and Tien are. And as luck would have it, the both of them are inside right now, apparently coming over during Goku's intergalactic battle. Which is perfect. Gohan asks what kind of training he'll be doing over the next couple years. Though growing a nervous smile, he presses him to wait and calm down a second. That's when Gohan's phone goes off. It's Vegeta. And looking in the background, we see Beerus, Whis, and the boys. The prince tells how he's with Whis, and he's just been informed. Kakarot was in Universe Zero when the Grand Prix froze it. Oh, shit. As a stunned silence fills the area, Vegeta tries in vain to get Gohan to answer. Damn. Back with Piccolo, the stranger from before. So my glorious thing, my thing. So my glorious king is trapped, betrayed, and frozen. Yo, free Goku till is backwards, man. Free Goku till is backwards, man. This some bullshit, bro. You these niggas can't do nothing without Big Cool. We know this. They're, these niggas chopped. They can't do nothing without Big Koo out there. Who they who leading them? Ba da ba ba ba, Jita? Don't pretend, Namek. Revealing the two other Namekians from the Tournament of Power, Pinel and Seono, from our left to right. Accompanied by the Supreme Kai of Universe 6, they believe joining forces over the next two years will give them their best chance at victory. Though Piccolo, who barely gives them an ounce of his attention, asks if they think he can really help them. Mm. Helena believes that each of them have something unique to contribute. Like what? So yes, he does. Why don't you two niggas fuse? In that case, Piccolo agrees. But before they leave, he has something to do first. Okay. Meanwhile, on Planet oh, Vampire, oh, 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 Rolly. Hey. the trio emerge from their cave to find a Capsule Corp ship touching down. Oh no. Hey. She like shouts out to greet Bulma with excitement. They must have had a bit of communication between the events of Broly cool? coming to Earth a right. moment before us now. The scientist returns the greeting while smiling if it isn't her favorite aliens. Okay. Walking over. This is you the know first what? time she's got- You know what? I didn't think we had Broly. We got a chance. There's somebody that can there's somebody that can actually, you know, move shit forward. There's somebody that actually got some. <clears throat> Broly can do some, man. You feel me? Like, my glorious king always gonna be my glorious king, but hey, hey, get my dog Broly ain't ever chilling. We need that right now. Have to see Broly up close. Commenting she didn't think he was this tall. Taking the enthusiasm out of Chile with a spout of territorialism. Y'all moving like these? For the TSO women, y'all moving like these for Broly? Y'all moving like Broly fine as fuck. Oh. Yo, the TSO women even worse than the Nick? No, no, actually, no. Let me let me stop. No, no, they're not. <laughs> Still red in the face. She questions what Bomo wants from him anyway. And naturally, they saw the black ball in the sky, right? Limo finds this curious. He's surprised to hear hey, she unk. also had that strange dream. We don't call him Limo. We call but him a unk. dream. No, it was real life. It was the Grand Priest. But Limo continues to argue that all three of them simply dreamt of it. Type shit. Bulma then believes she's figured it out. What, they playing Baldur's Gate? They were all certainly sleeping when the Grand Priest made his announcement. He must have found no other way to warn billions of beings who would have been sleeping at the time. <laughs> what, they get the dream is beckoning. It? So it was real? Does this mean there is an imminent war on the horizon right now? Maybe. 
And that is the unfortunate reality they're faced with. That's when Bulma's communicator goes off. Whis, of course, who delivers the same bad news to her as he did the others. Lost one with the gifted, by the way, D Delicia, Delilah, I don't know. With Gohan, Delicia, that's what I'm assuming. Thank you for the gifted. Without his dad, they all have a sure role to play, and he already knows what training would suit him best. Around Yo, the room, hold on. We have the affirmation. Roshi got that shit on, I can't lie. Roshi, Roshi, Roshi got that shit on. I can't lie. Yo, it didn't matter. Okay, Roshi. Okay, Roshi. I respect it. I respect the hell out of it. I respect the dog shit out of it. Okay, Roshi. Hell yeah, boy. Fashion Warriors plus Master Roshi. Krillin states he understands, but he couldn't do anything during the Tournament of Power. Heck, he didn't even face off with the most dangerous warriors and he still struggled. So what does he want him to do in a war involving the most powerful deities? Lock in, He'd nigga. like to give everyone some big Goku-like speech, but he's not that man. <laughs> Roshi admits he agrees with Krillin, but is still willing to fight. However, he has been training for almost 350 years. He doesn't see how he can progress any further. Mm. Krillin admits he knows this isn't a noble way of thinking, but he belongs here with his wife and Marin. These niggas are admitting they ain't that guy. Oh, shit. Clenching his fist, Gohan explains for years, Son Goku has been protecting them all and giving his life to the weak without hesitation. If anyone wants to stay here, do it. But his father and billions upon billions of people are waiting for them and need their help. Y'all gonna have to call me a hater. And I'm not hating when I do this. But let's, let's not try to, like, gang... Let, let's be dead ass right now, all right? Like, 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 bro, do we gotta, or do, do, do we gotta lie? Do, do, do we, do we have to admit it? Do, do we gotta, come on, bro. This nigga Superman. And, and like that that was always my theory about main character Gohan, but like come the fuck on, bro. He even got like the little scene. He this was clearly inspired by Superman. Look at this. A robot effect. Wrong button. But we pull. Look. Gohan. Billions upon billions of people are waiting for them and need their help. Yamcha figures since he doesn't have a family or anything to protect, he can take part. Tien feels the same. Damn, that's dark. Standing, 18 prompts Krillin to follow her. Type shit. Now in the kitchen, she tells her husband to listen. She knows that all he wants is the best for her and Marin. But above all else, this is not just about their lives. And he knows. But, she continues, she tells him whatever choice he makes. She will support him in any case. If he chooses to fight, she too will fight. If he chooses to stay, she will also stay. Lock in, Big Crew. Lock in, Big Crew. Back with Vegeta. Trunks tears up as he bids goodbye to his little sister. He knows that two years is as long as her whole life, but he promises he'll come back as soon as possible. W. He wants her to become w. a big girl, way. and soon she'll be a strong little princess. Okay. His father tells him that's enough. It's time to leave, doing so while simultaneously ushering Goten away. Yeah. Picking up his daughter, he instructs Trunks to board the cube. Double checking to make sure they're all out of ear and eye shot. In a rare display of affection, he tells his princess not to worry. Oh, he's a softy. That's so ad That's so adorable. Don't worry, princess. Daddy will be back. Oh. With our heroes venturing off to train in a place similar to the hyperbolic time chamber. Hey, color Where exactly it. will this take them? <gasps> color! C color! This is it, chat! The like button is now pressed! We finally did it! We got color! Color! Thank you! Finally! Can offer in this war? And being so young, will Goten and Trunks be able to fully benefit from the training of Whis? Touch it. Oh. A small pickup truck scuttles down the road. Debris of West City. Back to black and white. He's scattered on the shoulders. <laughs> it slows to a stop in front of Whis, Vegeta, and the boys, who are heading off to the cube, which will take them to Beerus's world. Vegeta finishes slipping on his gloves as he thanks someone for taking care of Bola while they'll be gone. Imagine Whis is like, I heard his that shit, by the way, buddy. Dr. Brief, who is more than happy to take on the task, 
After all, that's a sweet little granddaughter he's talking about. It's not like he has anything more exciting to do anyway. Yeah, shit. Holding his sister one final time, Trunk sheds a couple more silent tears wishing he could get to see her grow up. His father Trunk's a his W, hair, big bro. It's only two years, cuz. Whether the cause. others know it or not. Entering the cube, he informs that Gohan and the others will be here soon and it shouldn't take him too much longer. They too will be joining him for a portion of the journey. And moments later... Hell Gohan, yeah. Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien step forward <laughs> while they take Roshi like ice now. Yeah. He stays behind to tend to her daughter, and Roshi staying put because he doesn't believe he can benefit from any further training. Leading the pack, Krillin shall so give it everything they've got. It's time to enter that cube. If it wasn't for Roshi being the supervisor, 18, you should hop in there too. But I don't trust Roshi. Okay, so is this what y'all dream of for my Earthlings need opportunity type of people? Like, finally, they're going to get God Key, Earthling Saiyan 2, <laughs> Super Earthling 5, um, Kaioken Mastery, all this other shit. Is this what y'all dream of? Yep. Okay, cool. Please checks to make sure that's everyone. And if so, where would they like to be taken to for their training? Gohan confirms this is all who's going, and he'd like to start by going to Universe 9. This throws Vegeta off guard. What could they possibly learn in that realm? Yes, what does he have in mind? Who figures it'd be the best place for Yamcha, Tien, and Krillin? They're gonna go to see the trio Day Dangers. He hasn't contacted him yet, but he's sure they'll accept. Oh, shit. We remember, these are the werewolf like warriors from the preliminary fights. Though Krillin isn't very excited about stopped. the idea, arguing, Trio D Dangers? Seriously? Gohan enthusiastically retorts, Well, yeah, they'd have made mincemeat of Cell, and nearly did out of Majin Buu. From a previous conversation he had with Tien regarding the Tournament of Power, the Wolf Fang Fist Fighter asks if these are the three Fox guys from before. From the stories he's heard, he's not very impressed by this dangerous trio of canines. In fact, he'll just handle them all by himself. Yeah, for Knowing sure. full well what a mistake this would be, Tien advises his friend not get too far ahead of himself. Even Krillin and Gohan have to let out a lighthearted laugh at Yamcha's never-ending confidence. Who can blame him? After all, he did so well against the Cell Juniors, Android 17 and 18, Dr. Jiro, and he really gave it his all against that Cyberman. So Whoa, what the hell? What was that? What the, what the fuck? Why? Why? What was that about? That wasn't written. What the hell, Mondo? What the fuck? Hey, stick to the script, man. Hey, what the hell? Currently, I'm gonna keep doing this as a bit to him. Why the Yamcha stray? Shout out, Mondo Cool. So Gohan merely tells him they'll see how that goes. Yamcha continues unwavered, promising they'll be begging him to spare him once he's done. Facts. But as patience runs out, we lifts the cube to get him started. Trunks bids farewell to his grandfather and sister, as when he will next get to see him, very much will have changed for them all. Outside planet Vampa, from inside their ship, Jocko announces that for the first time in the history of the Galactic Patrol, they will be moving from one universe to another, so everybody better hang on. Mm. She lies confused move from one universe to another. And that's right. Planet Sadala oh, is situated fuck. in universe six. Broly and Kale might interact. Shit, honestly, Broly and Kali- Oh, no. Broly might bully Kaba. <laughs> Broly might bully Kaba, bro. With an exhilarated, let's go. Jocko guns at past light speed at 100 times faster than Plaid. Boma screams she's going to kill Jocko for this. Meanwhile, at the same speed, if not faster, our usual heroes enjoy a leisurely cruise from Universe 7 to Universe 9. Just as everyone begins to grow a bit bored, Whis announces they have arrived. Mm. Planet Calamon. They've made it to their first destination. Krillin jokes that the Angel makes an excellent taxi service, but he only questions. Hmm? Attack what? You don't know what taxi is in the background. Weiss. We get a glimpse of the world they will soon be arriving on. It appears to be swirling with a strange mist of some kind. The Go big Yeti star. The, the planet seems to be made of cotton or something. 
Their guide informs that planet Calamon is indeed known for having a thick layer of clouds surrounding it. Curious that it's actually known for this, Krillin asks just how thick this layer of clouds is. And more or less, it's about 3,000 kilometers thick, or 1,860 miles, which is half the radius of the planet at its center. Nerd. But that much? And they have to go straight through it? With a flick of the wrist, Whis is easily able to open a hole through the fog, causing Gohan to smirk that it seems like that won't be a problem. Although, it is a bit strange that he thought that would be a problem. They did just travel through complete universes, and he really thought a little cloud was going to stop him now. Yeah. On the surface, the light from space pierces the through the barrier-like overcast, creating an almost biblical-esque scene. Krillin peers over like the edge ten of the cube to is lurking. below. No time to check it out now. It's go time. He signals for Gohan, Yamcha, and Tien to follow him. But Gohan objects. He informs his allies he'll be getting off at the next stop. Yamcha sighs. Ah, so you decided to go after all. Which Gohan thinks will be better for him. But where could he plan on going? With the boys to train with Whis? At any rate, Tien wishes him luck. The Saiyan then questions if Whis heard what he said. Who confirms? So what are they gonna do, just box the trio? Okay. Moments later. Goten and Trunks wonder why the, the yellow nigga poisons them, GG's. Why Vegeta decided to get off here of all places. Universe 6, Planet Sadala. On the ground itself this time, a group of Saiyans approach baffled at the technology before them. They've never seen a ship like this before. Vegeta exits to get his first look at his alternative home planet. Oh, uh, shit. His own people. Vegeta about to be bricked. <laughs> Vegeta about to lose his mind on this goddamn planet. The warrior with the mechanical arm recognizes the alien as a Saiyan. Oh, no. to see a familiar sight. Though Vegeta doesn't return his sentiment. Damn. Whacking the native, he barks. A Saiyan. I'm your prince, you moron. Oh, shit. Making a grave mistake. The other surrounding Saiyans take an offensive stance. One bellows if he's looking for a fight. He's in for a treat. Oh no. But the visitor only mocks that a one armed man, a one eyed man, and an army of wimps who wouldn't even be worth a power level of 1,000. Is he really going to stoop to this? Yup. And finally, at their stop, yes, Trunks looks out to the world before him shouting, Look, Goten, it's Beerus' planet! Though the son of Goku is a bit taken aback, it's a lot smaller than he expected. But Trunks argues, Who cares? How cool would it be to own your own planet? Okay, Goten, Trunks, hella opportunities. Let's go Trunks and Goten. The Destroyer takes note of their arrival. Jumping up, he angrily questions Whis, what the heck is this? Clearly not expecting any visitors. With a giggle, he implores Lord Beerus to please be indulgent please and welcome their fuse. new visitors. Please don't fuse. But furiously shaking his head, he doesn't care. This isn't some kind of Club Med for Saiyans. They need to go home. He doesn't want any kids around. Club Med being a French travel and tourism company, I which I that. totally 1000% knew before looking up. Yep, no, yeah, yeah, thanks. But these remarks reverberate through Goten. Club Med? Is he serious? His dad might be dead by now, and he's just worried about having an entire planet all to himself? The god warns the mortal to watch his tone. Who the fuck is this guy? Well, he feeling bored today. Whoa! Who the What the fuck? His father is the least of their worries in a war of this magnitude. And anyway, the hothead Goku is. He would have died one way or another when the battle actually starts. The Sinsol causes Goten to launch towards Beerus. Goten? To Crash it out! Defend his dad's honor without a second thought. But Trunks wisely tries to jump between him in an effort to stop his friend. Okay. He asks Goten if he's crazy. But the boy isn't ready to listen to any semblance of reason. Okay. Telling Trunks to move out of the way. Oh, shit. No win what's at stake. The likely outcome of this altercation. Vegeta's son isn't having this nonsense and tries everything he can to prevent Goten from retaliating. He only again tells him to please move. Do, do. Stop falling! Oh, Throwing shit. Goten through a small satellite, the Saiyan grunts to Beerus it's not over. 
Oh. As the destroyer grabs his face, beginning to utter the word. Hakai. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. He stops himself, perhaps coming to a census, or perhaps teaching him a lesson. <laughs> Flicking the child on the forehead, he's knocked out cold. Beerus then calmly turns to Whis to insist that he is adamant that there will be no guests on his planet, so they must go practice their training elsewhere. Back with their favorite Earthlings, the gang tries in vain to communicate with the its natives. Tian attempts to get the attention We're of one more, gotta... but no one is answering him. But this goes back to my hot take. Local... This goes back to my hot take that people tried to cook me for, and I'm doubling down, man. Sometimes you just got to beat Goatsen's ass. Goatsen's like a couple ass beatings away, man. He might be a better character for it. Simply don't speak their language, which is admittedly strange. Bergamo, Lavender, and Basil understood him just fine. Finding themselves lost in the crowd, the situation may take a bit longer to resolve than our heroes hoped. Luckily, just who they're looking for happened around the corner. What the fuck is Basil that? The Bearstein Bears? Seven warriors so over there. But they think it's possible that they're the ones who made the hole in the sky that the kids told him about. And with Vegeta's little skirt, told you he would. As one would figure, a voice shot from behind a hill demanding to know who piled up her buddies. Oh shit! Revealing oh, Khalifa, shit. who's completely baffled and seeing Vegeta and questions, what the heck is he doing here? How could Vegeta possibly benefit from traveling here of all places? Oh, fuck. Does he plan on training with Kefla, the fusion of Kale and Khalifla? And where has Gohan decided to take his own training? <laughs> Blasting through dimensions to Universe 6, Jocko announces their arrival, only hoping the gang isn't all too shaken up by the rocky ride. Yeah, what the And inside, save one of them, the passengers have been scattered throughout the cabin. In a huff, Bulma has to jab. Hardly, you idiot! In response to his previous question, Bulma. I know Bulma. But at any rate, the space band gleams with excitement that this ship's technology is a complete good. success. You got a the husband. Galactic Patrol adventure from one universe to another you for got the a first husband. time in their history. Now, you doing, on the planet Sidala. Earlier, in Universe 11, Margarita, Angel to Belmont, explains that the latter will not lose his destructive powers. However, He's been a god of destruction for 3,002.185 years, and the powers attributed to destructive deities only last as long as their reign. These comments get Top's attention. Belmont himself acknowledges this unfortunate truth, while adding, Will I die? Who knows? But he's already lived a very long time, Yo, even for his species. That looks nasty. He hasn't told them enough, but Dispo, Jiren, and of course Top here are all great warriors who he respects. Nah, I give it back to Belmont. <laughs> Taking in a breath. Nah, give it back with to determination Belmont. in his eyes. Had to analyze it. Give it back to Belmont. Give it back to Belmont. Margarita taps her staff to begin Drip a sort of failed. ceremony. This causes two giants to appear. Whether biological or monuments, the pair emit an intense energy and bear an appearance only fitting to their intimidating stature. Okay. As a radiant key envelops Top and Belmont, what? we're left to wonder what exactly this is all for. What? Though we can likely make an assumption with confidence. As the ceremony goes on, a presence makes itself known to Margarita, Jiren, and Dispo. Streaking down from the sky, something lands not too far from the warriors on the alien planet. Okay. Shooting each other a quick glance, Dispo tells he's going to check it out. As Jiren stays as nonverbal as ever. Moving around at the speed of sound. He's baffled who he's looking at. Why would he be here? But back at the ceremony, a tragedy has taken place. What the fuck? Seeming to transfer his throne to top as foreshadowed in the Tournament of Power. Belmont has rendered nothing more than a withered husk. What the fuck? Retaining her emotional neutrality towards non-angels, Margarita merely turns to top to ask how he feels. And with his new power coming to a settle, he states he's feeling good. 
before realizing what's happened. He screams out as his mentor falls to his knees. Oh my god. The former student does the same, though slamming his fists into the ground with anguish. He likely would have refused all of this had he known this would be the outcome. Oh my god. Entering, Dispo and their unexpected visitor. As many are already aware, Gohan. Well, shit. Right, well, Belmont's cooked. Yeah, Belmont's cooked, but hey, Gohan's here. The top shoots him a powerful glare, almost directing his fury towards him. Whoa. And since time is a valuable commodity, what, especially what, 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 what given recent Gohan events, do? he admits he's not sure he knows everything that's going on here. But time is running out. He thinks they have a lot to offer him. Back on Sadala. After seeing him beat down a bunch of her cronies, Khalifa demands to know what the heck Vegeta's doing here. Not too much. Because he wants to. Kaba and Kale. The former asks what she's talking about. With a fierce scowl, she spouts that Kaba's idol just showed up out of nowhere and smashed up a bunch of their people. Master? But his idol? What's she going on about? Vegeta at last addresses all her hollering. Almost as if he was speaking to a child. And in some respect, there may be more truth to that than meets the eye. Yeah, he basically. tells her to be kind. More importantly, stop being so childish and bring him to their king. He has no time to lose. Mm -hmm. Though we all know about how well trying to put Khalifa in her place works. This tears her into oh, a rage, no. causing her to scream what's wrong with him. He just beat up her buddies and now he's trying to give her orders? Kappa does his best to hold her back, but there's no telling how much longer he can keep his grip. Taken aback by her behavior, the prince can only comment to himself that there's definitely something off about that girl as he compares her mannerisms to that of a rabid dog. She continues her attempts to wriggle free, swearing to Kaba that she's going to gut him. The young Saiyan restraining her assures Vegeta not to worry, believing she Wait, won't be Kaba able to about to give her a German. Even Kale appears a bit surprised by her actions. Turning to Kale, Vegeta decides that while these other two are acting out, can she take him to the king instead? But even she herself appears a bit uneasy about the situation. The fuck she doesn't immediately know how to react. With the others, Khalifa finally stops jerking around and promises Kaba she'll calm down. Cap. He gives her his attention, making sure she's for real. She doubles down and assures she won't be any trouble. Cap. But Vegeta knows better. He warns his Saiyan brethren not to let her go. <laughs> Don't let her go. And it's soon made clear why. <laughs> Oh shit. And Kale's mad. As she rushes in, Vegeta decides to end things immediately by delivering a staggering Super Saiyan kick, though not to the complete approval to all nearby. As her body ricochets off the loose ground, Kava shouts out to see if she's alright. The prince turns the other direction before barking. Oh, to she know held what it together. I was wrong. For, El Countdown. Warning, he better not have to repeat himself. Picking up their ally. Kaba and Kale don't appear impressed with their Universe 7 counterpart. Damn, at least Meanwhile, we got one time? planet pillar in the same universe. It appears on a pretty creepy planet, possibly the home planet of Tim Burton. As its name suggests, two giant caterpillar-like bugs are seen doing bug stuff in the background. Bug stuff? As another insect does its best to hide from the assassin. Oh shit. Okay. Seeming to give him the slip, Frost pours with sweat, not only out of the stress regarding the situation, but also because this planet is incredibly hot, so much so he can barely breathe. Frost your coat. Frost your coat. With yeah, that motion, coat. the Frost Demon knows he must be done for. He's about to use one of his assassination techniques, which only oh. somewhat turns out to be the case. Using his time skip, he gets at the villain's throat demanding some information, asking if the demon has any other brilliant ideas for tailing a man who was born to hunt. Oh shit. He wants to know who hired Frost to follow him. Meaning it's actually the other way around. It hasn't been hired to terminate Frost. Pleading with the hitman to calm down, he assures nobody hired him. He works only for himself. In fact, what he wants is revenge. Oh no. Making their way to the king of Sadala, Kaba tells his mentor they've arrived. But Vegeta doesn't see anything resembling a palace or alike. The boy instructs him to look down. And sure enough, one of the most oh illustrious constructions presents itself to the prince. Several stories circle one another, as each lair showcases its own unique and impressive design. And looking above, so the king this lives underground. Fuck, is he a badger mole? technology the Saiyans here possess, not unlike the ones from our universe. 
This is the palace of King Sadala. He takes it all in, almost taking pride in the formation before him, thinking what could have been for his own people. Kappa shouts out to someone named Sprouts who's hovering in a ship. He asks if he can take them to the king. In the Didn't ship, Sprouts. he happily greets Kappa. And fulfilling the request, everyone hops aboard his vessel. Khalifa still out. You <laughs> got her slumped over there. This nigga look like he gonna crash the plane. Cold in the background. Doing his best to ease the awkward tension, he mentions that he's never seen Vegeta around here before. So where does he come from? Not too much. The prince responds that that makes sense given he's from another universe. Oh, okay. He's never been here before. Pausing, the chauffeur begins to laugh heartily, saying that's a good one. He almost had him there for a second. Yeah, facts. But given the events Vegeta's been through, he doesn't really see what's so funny about this. Catching eye of his gaze. Sprouts thinks he may have overreacted. Yeah, just fly, a tad. just fly, bro, just fly, bro. <laughs> Yo, Vegeta, you ain't fucked her. herself awake with her own snot bubble. Khalifa again begins to scream after Vegeta. The crazy idiot thinks he can just kidnap her. He's never gonna get away with this. As Kaba does his best to hold her back, Vegeta shouts in vain for his protege to restrain her. But that's what he's trying to do. As this continues on for a moment. Luckily, they're only seconds away from landing within the palace. Right, knocked her out again. Leading the prince to leave quite the first impression on those in power here. Making their descent to the lowest level, a robot guard beckons if it should warn the king. Though the man nearby instructs there's no need to bother him, only wishing he had a coin for every time a jester desecrated this palace. However, it wouldn't be long before word of Vegeta's Lord arrival Raditz. would make its way through the palace. A messenger runs up to Lord Sadala. He tells of a strange individual who's come from another universe to request an audience. Without any resistance, the king agrees to grant it. It's Lord Raditz strange, locked. Turn up, Panda, to stutter. G good, he's waiting for you in the main hall. And if that's the case, the king figures it would be It's Lord Raditz. It's Lord Raditz, ladies and gentlemen. You thought that series was over. No, no, no. It was just in a different manga, ladies and gentlemen. You thought it was over. You thought it was over. What did I tell you? There's only room for one boss. The final boss, Raditz. Oh my God. Though towering over his visitor, the king approaches to respectfully greet Vegeta. He introduces himself as King Sadala Raditz. before inquiring of his guest's name, who in turn responds with simply his name alone. Staring down at the prince, the king tells the young traveler that he heard he comes from literally another universe. Even for himself, that's quite the curiosity. So what's his story? What brings him to this place? But Vegeta grunts he has no time to lose with his stories. Oh, shit. He's come here for. Though Sadala interrupts him. Listening to or telling a story is never a waste of time. Is it? He oh. gestures for him to please explain everything to him. He said that with bass in his voice. So in that case, Vegeta implores the royal to explain this palace of his. He's never seen a structure built in such depth. Okay. Who responds there is indeed a reason for that. His people have not always known peace. Okay. While he doesn't know about the Saiyans where Vegeta comes from, but here the Saiyans ruled through submission and violence, survival of the fittest. Nothing mattered but strength. He himself was once an illustrious warrior, driven by his own thirst for battle and power. Here, they were just a wild race of beings, Touch their it. only essence being battles. They were completely out of their mind. It sounds like us. There were ancestral stories from this planet which referred to them once bearing tales, not unlike those of a monkey. Sounds like it us. It seems that by the simple fact they did not use the transformative power they instilled, they would be lost to time. Eventually, the people would become divided. So King said all of this error provided, they just didn't have a once mold? again, his legitimacy by bringing the whole world together. Even non-fully blooded Saiyans would join them in an interspecies alliance. Because of this interbreeding, they were able to stand up to the most powerful of opponents. In the beginning, he himself- You can't fool me, that's Naruto with the fucking Sniper King mask on. Nigga, this is a Rasengan! ...was a simple army general adhering to the king's ideals and merely supporting him in his decisions. But through unparalleled loyalty, he was able to rise it. through the ranks and would be recognized as the right-hand man of their king. 
The years passed him from <laughs> battlefield to battlefield. He saw his brothers in arms killed one after another, while his loyalty to the king that's, only grew stronger. in the throne. He was used to seeing blood, presenting the scar on his face as his witness. But this was, it was one too many. A fiend came about calling himself Gurkin the Bloody. He was a man who hated the king more than the demons themselves. Okay. More than his own demons. Prove it. He was always the eternal runner-up, always falling short as the king had beaten him time and time again. Damn. But sparing his life each time only crushed and maddened Gurkin more. Release of So he's their Vegeta. That's tough. Gurgan. All right. Death was an infinitely better alternative in his eyes. He couldn't bear it. And lucky for him, the current Sidala felt the same. Night and day, the present King Sidala would hunt him, driven by his own hatred, but to his amazement. So there is a moon. Why the relief he so coveted by killing Gherkin was ultimately an illusion. The shoving his fist into his stomach didn't fill the void he felt. Oh. When removing it, he saw nothing but the emptiness of an endless tunnel. This shape, which has been engraved into his memory, gave its shape to the palace which they currently reside. Sadala Palace. Since the previous King Sadala hadn't sired any offspring, and because of his own hierarchical position, his people voted unanimously for he himself to succeed him. Even today, he can't look himself in the mirror without thinking of his fallen brothers. Type shit. When he came to power, he vowed to perpetrate the ideals of their former king, to put an end to all these childish wars and reunite their camps. Type shit. The braid he wears. He makes it every morning to remember that oath and stick to it. A Saiyan who fails to stand by their convictions is a usurper. He then tells how he explained all of this because he thinks he knows why Vegeta came here, but his ambitions will be without the Saiyans of Planet Sadala, bidding him a goodbye. But just as his farewell leaves his lips, Vegeta scoffs that he's starting to understand. Narrowing his eyes and pointing directly in front of him, he chides King Sadala is afraid of death. Oh. Baffled by his visitor's words, he stutters while asking how dare he show such disrespect. Me personally. At first, our prince merely smirks and stares him down. That's when a few particular memories surface in Vegeta's head. One where he's telling someone that without Frieza around, he'd be able to beat him up. Given his lack of a tail and old armor, likely Kui on Namek. Then the other. After he lets Cell reach his perfect form, only to fall Wait. miserably to the biological Vegeta, android. what's going on, man? Why is that your face? Vegeta? Hey, buddy. Whoa. Then surprising all. Oh, oh, Vegeta fans. How you feel? Is he, is, is your glorious king? Taking a knee to someone else? Is, is, is your, your, your prideful saying. Taking a knee? He actually offers a gesture of humility and drops to a knee. Even Khalifa's dumbfounded by this. He utters, King Sadala, father of Saiyans, I implore you, whatever we do, thousands will die. It's up to us to act so it's not our own. A king who doesn't keep his promises is a usurper. Later, now on planet Nabur, Frost seems to be chasing him planet to planet begging he help. How y'all feel about that, man? Me personally, I just got agendas to push. W humility for sure, but Vegeta? Oh. Fulfill his revenge. As this has clearly been going on for a while, we join the mid server boy Jeets. If it could so be called. He begs him to at least teach him something. Just one assassination trick. But all of his requests are met with a simple no. Frost then asks how he's gonna make him suffer if he doesn't help him. The hit tells him to do it himself and let him do his job. When the demon thinks he's got it. The technique he wants to learn is the one hits saving, just in case he ever has to make him suffer, oh, right? Shit. Which is also met with a simple no. The frost demon then comes to a stop. Holding his arms, he scoffs, he sees now. It's a shame, he had thought they were friends. Hit might need some, by the way. Friends, that is. He's alone all the time. It's depressing. You know I can kill you, right? Still not giving an inch. The assassin shrugs this off uttering, if you say so. Frost goes on. He claims the two of them aren't so different. He himself knows how it feels to be forced into a mold, which is why his species won't allow itself to be outdone under any circumstance. He insists he's only telling Hit all of this because it almost sounds like he doesn't like his job, even his life perhaps. Now I could kill you, right? 
freezing frost. The demon stands dumbfounded. Looks like it decided to use one of his assassination techniques on the frigid fiend after all. But of course, doesn't actually end him. He's just finished with the conversation as he once again responds. Jesus if you Christ. say so. A bit further away. She They're like gets a bit flying? snuggly with her giant death puppy. As she and Le Are they fighting for Broly in here? Nemo try to sleep the trip away. Bulma inquires of the patrolman how much longer this trip Yo, will be up, now that they're in Universe get my 6. Boy Unk some load in. As he mouths down on some space snacks, he grumbles. Two more days. This causes the scientist to let out a chuckle. She lie really and me should switch places. <sighs> but how much longer will it really take? However, he wasn't joking. It's going to be two days. But he didn't tell her any of this. She hopes you remember to bring supplies. But still chewing, he just finished his super chocolate bar. With it alone, he can easily last the next four or five days. Taco, you are a dick. But fortunately for them, Broly has him covered. He brought along six legs of some weird spider. And if they're thirsty, they're plenty juicy as well. Fuck. Yo, chat. Two days, no food. He knows. Two days, no food. He knows. I ain't gonna lie. It's just two. I'm just sleeping, bro. I'm just sleeping, bro. I'm just Even sleeping. The air in the room. <laughs> Bulma's just now discovering it's going to be a long journey. Back with Vegeta, one of the robot guards asks if it and the other should act, given their visitors' transgressions. The king himself not looking too happy. He retorts that if someone has to act, it will not be them. The prince states the king heard the same thing they all have. So whether he likes it or not, war will take place. Referring to the Grand Priest's message to the multiverse, what will he do when the enemy enters his land? Welcome them with a white flag. Vegeta can't guarantee that nobody will die, but he swears to make each and every one of them worthy of their name. But he'll make sure that all of them can look after their own. Okay. Oh. Uh. Raditz? Oh shit. Um, he's crashing. Raditz is crashing. Giving oh, everyone a taste of what he's capable of. Sadala commands his guards to gather the whole of Sadala's special forces. He has an announcement for them. Vegeta smiles. He assures the king he won't regret this. Okay. Walking away, he himself smiles. I do not live with regret, Saiyan. Okay, Raditz! Okay, Raditz! With the entire Saiyan army gathered, King Sadala announces this is a call to all special forces. Gaining the trust and alliance of his Universe 6 counterparts. It seems Vegeta's plan is to not only train himself, but the entirety of the Saiyan race. How will he be able to manage so many warriors? And what will our other heroes learn in their own I adventures? like that for Vegeta, man. I like that for Vegeta. With his forces gathered, King Sidala announces for all of his warriors to listen well. Himself and their ancestors have fought to make peace speak for itself. But those days are unfortunately over. Everyone here was shocked by the announcement made by the Grand Priest. And now they must prove they know how to defend themselves against these fomenters of revolt. They, as Saiyans, are a people who live in a world of facts, not in a dreamlike conception of the world which surrounds them. So he ushers everyone to raise their fists and please welcome the heir to the neighboring universe. Let them both fight hand in hand. Okay. They will fight for their own. Glory to the Saiyan people. Two days would come and go for our inter-universal travelers. Oh no. Jocko happily tells everyone they've finally arrived. Oh no. Oh no. Opening the hatch and setting foot on Sadala. The this first nigga Broly going touchdown. expedition of the Galactic Patrol is complete. Gazing outward with pride, the spaceman spouts he doesn't look too bad here. A nice change for many of their rotten planets. But as we glance around, nobody else seems to share his positive attitude. Roma quips to remind her to never try Broly's food again, referring to the giant spider-like creature he brought aboard, which was their only source of sustenance for the last 48 hours. Ignoring his passengers' groans of anguish, Jocko reaches into a pouch to continue what they've come here for. He just pulls out some food. Device. Oh. Now they need to find Vegeta. He lets loose a little robot which takes to the sky, displaying technology that the modern NSA will likely make public one day soon. 
It's able to use facial recognition to identify everyone nearby. Maybe we know what Vegeta looks like. He figures while their technology does all the work. Just find Maybe Vegeta. in the meantime, well, the they'd like to get something to eat. The fuck yeah. this auto face ID shit gonna do? We know what it looks like. Just walk around. Oh, minus Broly are still struggling at the thought of food. The mere idea of giving them flashbacks of hairy, bloody spider shawarma. Though Broly is just excited to see if they have some Udani legs, which are the tick or spider-like creatures of Planet Vampa. With his laser-like focus, Chaco spots a stand labeled kebab. He thinks that sounds cool. Confidently I do not want to fish that he looks like you he just killed food it. For five people, which he does. Shooting his customer a glare, he asks what he can get for him. And since none of them are exactly familiar with the local cuisine, Chila and Limo keep it simple by ordering the dish of the day. Though Bomo requests the Versajian salad, whatever that is. And Jaco wants the chef's specialty, this kebab thing. Turning to Broly, the cook then inquires what he wants since he's remained silent this oh, entire no. time. Then ain't gonna say everything. But the giant's confused. Why does this man only serve three dishes? Chilai told him that restaurants have lots of choices. And if we look closer, we see Broly refers to the three pictures of food within the menu. Not too much. In an annoyed tone, Not the chef too questions much. the others if he can't read or can't count, leaving him even more lost. The legend. Not too much. Here y'all go, bro. And Dairy Saiyan asks if this means this isn't a restaurant at all. Chilai lets out a sigh, promising she tries to teach him these things. Here y'all go. Sooner or later, the robot would spot Vegeta and the others That's on the ground below. Vegeta! We found him! Like Audio contact in progress. Niggas just didn't want to look. The machine contacts Jaco to let him know Vegeta's been found. Who, checking his device, looks to confirm. What you eating don't look that good, my boy. He's gonna blow it up. But being it's the Vegeta we know. Get out, bro. Yeah. Destroying the defenseless robot. For a moment, the patrolman sits dumbfounded. Before slamming his receiver and over and over on the table once he puts two and two together, the cost of that robot's going to come out of his salary. Back with the prince. Kabar argues, what if that was the king's? While Khalifa inquires what that thing even was. Two concerns that Vegeta simply grunts at. Freaking out, Jocko screams he's already bought a round of food and drinks for everyone while Bulma over here is just loaded. He's gonna Steal end up broke. Steal it. Scientist taking exception to this little hissy fit. Steal it. She hollers at him to go and do the drone's work himself. Obviously, if he has money for fancy devices, he's not that broke. Taking off, he begins to become bothered by the fact that it seems like he's doing all the work around here. It's really starting to get boring. Oh shit. Flying over the central metropolis of Sadala. This feels more like a chore than anything yeah, else. Yeah, flying boots, but you know what? A few hours ago, at Gohan's house. Gohan's house? Who cares? Something's going on here. Wait. I thought you left. It seems that before he left to see the Pride Troopers, uh -oh. Piccolo wanted to bid him goodbye. He shakes his hand and tells him to train hard. Who intends to? And speaking of which... He motions to Videl. Main character time. He'd like to take Pan to meditate, or maybe even train with him. Though she hopes he's only kidding. Nope. And he tells her that the truth is he actually did the same for Gohan, back when he was only four years old. Yes, he's he was yes. the first serious mentor the child ever had. But she shouts those days are over and he can forget it, offering a sarcastic thanks and goodbye. Huh? Well, dejected. Damn. It was just a question, man. It was just a yes or a no. You ain't had to yell at my dog like that. Damn. Piccolo ultimately respects her decision. Maybe next time she'll come around. And inside, it looks like Gohan's more blown away than anybody by his wife's fierce reaction. Yeah, like... Possibly getting flashbacks of his own mother. Walking off and appearing rather proud of herself, she tells Why? Gohan to go and get ready. They're going to be joining Bulma and Vegeta soon. The youngster can't help but ask what's wrong with her mom. And where did Piccolo have to go off to? Unfortunately, Videl only calls that it's time for her to take her nap now. Oh my god! Gohan eventually lets out a reluctant chuckle at the situation. Now <laughs> genuinely thinking back to Chi Chi. Yo, and Gohan is misogynist. <laughs> this nigga Gohan sees that. Women. Yo, Gohan, bro. Chill, bro. Ch ch chill, bro. Bro, bro, it's not. 
but you can't do that. G- Gohan. Nah. <laughs> Gohan. That's not how that works, bruh. He was Pan's age. He chortles that he bet she's going to grow up to be just the same one day. A few moments pass and Pan is seen looking Aww. at a book in bed. Hearing a tap on her door. Hey, you better not fuck with Pan. She frantically turns off the lights and tosses the book, knowing full well she's supposed to be sleeping. Type shit. Opening the door. Her father. Gone. You look creepy. No. She's supposed to be sleeping. Opening the door. Gohan, you look beyond creepy in this exact picture. I'm not going to lie, dog. Like, I would be terrified. And I'm a grown-ass man. I know that you're off guard scaring the shit out of her. Nigga, you cannot open the door like this, bro. Come on, man. Her father. Spotting the book on the ground, he lets out a smile. He sits down on the side of her bed and pretty much calls her out that she was reading longer than she was supposed to, wasn't she? This is met with a ballad. She can read with a binky? How old is Pan? But a fake snoring. He assures her there's no point in pretending to sleep. Her snores are awful. And her defeat. This actually upsets her as she sits up and apologizes. Being the softy he is and seeing he upset her. He takes a moment to sit with his child. He explains that what he's about to tell her is really important and it's going to be useful for the rest of her life. People will always try to impose their vision on her. What really matters is what she wants in her heart of hearts. So never let anyone tell her what to do. She's pure of heart. He's sure she'll never hurt anyone. This clearly mirroring Gohan's own childhood. Okay. Unfortunately, a lot of this is lost on her. She asked why he's saying all these weird words. That's when he remembers. You're only three years old. She speaks rather well, can function, can read, understands the concept of faking sleep from your parents. She has a binky in her mouth? And it's not that three-year-olds can't have binkies. It's that, like, she's fucking brilliant to be having a binky. Huh. Whatever. She's only three. Who adorably argues she'll be three and a half soon. Knowing the training ahead of him. He gives his daughter a kiss goodnight, telling her to sleep well. She, like, I'm not grown, but she's smart as shit. Like, see, like, she, Back like, she is Stella. cognitive. Of, she's cognitive of what shit means. She's a smart ass Todd, bro. Jocko stomps down right before Vegeta, snarkily interrogating if he just so happened to have recently destroyed a very expensive gadget by chance. Bluntly, the Saiyan snarls he doesn't care about his stupid gadget. And what does he want with him? And what he wants? He had to travel for two days for his wife and three scoundrels. That's when it registers with Vegeta. Oh yeah, that was part of the plan too. Heading over to the others. Khalifa scoffs okay, that she doesn't even go. know what they're all doing here. The interaction. And spotting the gang she was just hoping to see. Bulma greets him with a big smile. Kaba being the only one to walk up to her and say hello properly. Right, right. But that could be because she doesn't think Vegeta has mentioned these other two before. Khalifa taking offense to this great affront. Snarking, that's not cool. The prince chuckles a bit while commenting. He didn't want to bother his wife talking about disgusting individuals such as themselves. Oh. No. Not in the predictable. <laughs> You're joking, right? Almost as if she got her feelings hurt. Khalifa sulks off. She pouts how that made her mad and she's gonna go head home. Oh shit. Bulma shoots her husband a death stare. But he seems pretty satisfied with the effects his words had. <laughs> when Kaba looks at his invisible watch in a panic. How inconvenient! It's getting late. He just remembered he had something to do. Nah, he has nah, to go. nah, nigga. Follow through. Right you stand right here. See ya. Aw, oh, they let the nigga go. Not fooling anyone and only wanting to avoid this awkward situation. Vegeta swears only cowards live on this planet. Damn. Given her already timid nature, Kale thinks it'd be best if she went too. But Bulma then directs her fury towards her instead of her husband. Oh. She's just going to run away now too? Who does she think will guide him around this planet if she leaves? Oh my god. <laughs> you don't know this woman. Jumping back to her bubbly attitude, she says it'll be fun. What the hell? That's when the inevitable happens. 
female Broly. Please, no. He locks eyes with the Broly Broly. Romance aside, what's the game plan now that Broly joins Vegeta and the others on Planet Sadala? Will it be up to him to get Kappa, Khalifa, and Kale into shape as Vegeta trains the entire Saiyan army? Or does the prince plan to train everyone himself at once? Wait, did he say romance aside? <laughs> Chilai takes exception to the situation, shouting to Broly that she's still here. When he makes the first move, he introduces himself and questions what her name is. But Chilai screams to know why he's even bothering to ask. With no other words, Kale merely comments her own name in response. Oh shit. As Chilai cries out, How long are you going to keep ignoring me? Oh shit. Kale takes in a deep breath, trying to overcome her anxiety. She tries to get pumped up by telling herself she can do this. Oh shit. Her eyes shift to a much more welcoming expression. Oh she no. She turns to Bulma to accept the request of escorting them around the planet. After all, it's not like there's anything better to do. Yo. Getting her way yet again, Bulma leaps with excitement and thanks their new tour guide. They can head downtown now if she wants. And since they've all finished eating, they begin to head that direction. Though already getting a rundown of the area, Vegeta complains is that he doesn't Kale like rides this, this is such a pain. His wife promises this will be fun, just trust her. While Jocko snips, they just go already. Like Kale said, it's not like they have anything better to do. As Broly notices Chilai lagging behind. In a huff, she crosses her arms and pouts to Limo that she doesn't think they're invited. Oh shit. He asks her what's wrong. And naturally, she simply mutters, nothing. With a prod, a confused Broly inquires, she's coming too, right? <laughs> Reluctantly, and eventually agrees to. <laughs> hey, my nigga Broly trying to put up well numbers. <laughs> Yo, Broly said all shots is good shots. I'ma <laughs> keep shooting. <laughs> Yo, that nigga really gonna keep shooting. The gang walks for only about half a minute before Yo. Kale announces they've reached their destination. Now we see what Vegeta was referring to with the rides. It appears a Ferris wheel and roller coaster span across half the city itself. Our heroes have contrasting opinions on the Saiyan capital. While Broly thinks it's beautiful, Chaco was honestly expecting much more. She lies by fully agreeing with the latter. Though given the last couple minutes, she would probably still have this opinion even if she were looking at Florence or Paris. Mm. Kale admits it is a pretty small city. And because of course, the behemoth asks that now that they've seen the city, what's next? Timidly, Kale thinks they can actually, you know, go into the city. Whoa. Causing Chile to puff. What's there to even do down there? Whoa. Are there shops or anything? All the while thinking she hopes this Kale girl won't be their tour guide this entire time they're here. Kale plays the response. On? Of course. Before soliciting, she's Chilai, right? Oh shit. Oh shit. Kale checking Chilai right now. Chilai, I ain't gonna lie. You gotta go crazy in this this passive aggressive ass conversation that they're gonna have. You gotta put up numbers. You gotta search your dominance, bro. Cause she about to G check you right now. She about to G check you right. now. Ne Yo, Chila, you gotta say something to search your dominance. And in all her confident glory, the green humanoid thrusts her hands under her hips to proclaim the one and only. Her overt personality causing Limo to shake his head. She probably ain't worried about you, dog. Kale got that. She ain't worried about her. She ain't worried about it. She ain't worried about it. The gang moves close enough to you. ain't such a dominance. You just said that you heard, but like, you ain't. They all seem really busy down there. Fuck up, little Kale. See, it's mostly people just <laughs> casually shopping or kids playing Kale similar to how they do on Earth. Day. So this kind of hints to Kale that one of her visitors is a bit different than the others. She questions where he comes from, or rather, how do things go on his home planet? Oh, shit. He admits he's actually never done anything other than hunting before. There's neither people or much to do where he comes from. But there is Chilai, and he loves her, picking her up and placing her on his okay. shoulders. She doesn't much like being abruptly hoisted into the air. Holy trying to go crazy. Okay, Kale Broly. tells him that's a good thing then, as we're able to pan over the area below. Vegeta scoffs, he still doesn't know what they're doing here. Boma almost agrees with him. To be fair, it's really similar to Earth. Regardless, the gang heads in. 
The sea up close to Sadala equivalent to deep fried fair Broly food. Broly is double dipping. The but I ain't gonna lie, these niggas yapping. Broly double dipping this whole time. <laughs> Simple games the kids play here, just like Broly the ones on Earth is, and likely other planets. Broly is double Broly dipping. Broly down to ask what they're doing. One of the children explained they're playing a game where the Broly's first person going to close their crazy. eyes loses. A game Chi-Li and Kale are playing as well. Seeing the Ferris wheel, Broly wonders what the point of that thing is. They can fly. And flattering a passerby, he compliments the woman on her fancy hat. That's when they find themselves in a park-like area. A trio of shady individuals call out to him. The thug protests to the muscle man that can he see he's in their territory? Um, With his leather jacket, it's possible these guys are from Khalifa's area. At least from what we know in the anime iteration. Now, I understand that you guys may be in a gang where your boss is really tough. If I see like some 6'4 nigga with scratches on his chest and face, he's not wearing a shirt, and he's just zibing. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm leaving that nigga alone. I don't know. I don't know what you niggas drank today, but y'all are crazy. I think 6'4 might have been downplayed. Someone in the chest is 6'9, and you might be right. What are you doing? The other complains. Not only do these other Saiyans get all the fame, but now they're stealing their females as well. <laughs> Something Bulma takes exception to. Do they think this is how you treat females? I'm telling the goons to get lost. Yes, sorry, ma'am. Damn, Bulma. Damn, Bulma. Chi-Li approves of the scientist's actions, shooting her thumbs up. Who shudders, little brats like them really get on her nerves. It seems like some things don't change no matter what universe you're in. But there is something they were right about. Maybe Broly shouldn't go walking around shirtless. It's inappropriate. Not too much. <laughs> Another thing she likes about she couldn't have said better herself. Bulma reaches into her jacket Yo, where she appears she to be altering several capsules addict. and devices. She explains there must be something here for him to wear. Finding the perfect solution, she reveals something she describes as her new capsule technology. Oh? So first, they're going to have to get rid of this smelly thing. Not grabbing a boss ear. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, 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 Bulma. All right, well, Bulma dead. RP. Damn, you was a smart woman. Bro Broly versus Vegeta is going to be iconic. Um, GG's. <laughs> it's over. But just as he's done before, Fuck. Broly indiscriminately reaches out to stop her. Bulma. Now very concerned, lets Broly know he's hurting her. That's when Kale interjects. He can keep it. It's not a big deal. If the smell bothers her that much, she knows a good perfume maker near here. Okay. With the situation settling, Bulma states she wasn't aware how much that thing meant to him, apologizing to the Saiyan. Yeah, bro, just smiled after this shit, bro. This thing is untouchable, bro. Holy shit. Anyway. She instructs him to place the capsule on his You're chest. Broly living rent free. He also tells her not to worry about it. Okay. Placing the device around his heart area, he asks, like this? Causing oh. the capsule to open. Look at the Broly a black t-shirt bearing the Capsule Corp logo. Though okay. he complains, it feels really tight. Bulma rolls her eyes for a okay, night such a whim. It's perfect. Calm drip, nothing too crazy. Blushing and trying to move past all this kale business. She lie mutters, she thinks it fits him Yo, well. Yo, she lies. Surprisingly <laughs> flattering him. Yay! With Whis and the boys on Planet Crape, it seems the angels replaying some of Gotenks' highlights. Okay. Likely trying to access a way to make him as powerful as possible for the war. The kids cheer out, watching their former self in all his overconfident glory. No, nah, we'll need no so more cool. that. Turning off the video, Whis believes that's all he needed. No. Getting into formation. Fuck! Please no. Fuck no. Also, what is the Go Tanks highlight film? What is the, what is the Go Tanks highlight reel? Like, you know the AMVs? Like Goku? Oh my God, Goku's back is probably crazy. Yo, the Goku AMVs is nuts. Go Tanks? Is them just like? You know, that might have to be a video. We won't make a dime, but that might gotta be a video. Just like looking at people's highlight films. Man, I feel like. I feel like Gotenks is got cool little jump. I, I feel like Vegeta's is gas. I feel like uh, Piccolo's is gas. I feel like Gohan's gonna have that shit. Goku's is gonna be peak. Jiren's is gonna be neck. Jiren's is low key gonna be crazy. But Gotenks, I don't know.
The boys begin the start of the fusion dance, thinking they're finally getting to the training part. But with a lighthearted chuckle, their mentor strictly forbids them from fusing for now. W East. How's Insane W East. To go trunks? Holy shit, W East. explanation. The goal of the first part of this training is to reach the maximum level for Gotenks, for both of them individually as well. This is the best way to achieve their fullest potential. There will be three steps, the first consisting of them becoming one with their inner selves. To put it more simply, they will have to be able to unleash all their power in one blow, be it with physical contact or not. They will have to face their weaknesses, their emotions, and their inner demons. Fuck it, this is improvement though. This is improvement. It presents the first exercise. A plastic ball resides in the center of this device. A light will appear either red or green on the top of it. When a single side of the device is hit, the red light will appear. Okay. Color. Both sides simultaneously. The green light will also appear. Wait, Therefore, what? their Police? goal is to activate both lights. And for the hits to be hard enough and of the same intensity, so the ball in the center explodes from the pressure. Fuck, they rescinded training? Rigor, focus, and explosiveness will all be needed. Though, according to Weiss himself, the hardest part will be the perfect synchronization required for the ball to explode. Oh. So they're still doing Go Tanks theme things. Fuck! Presenting the machine to him, he announces it's their turn. On Sadala, Vegeta shouts for everyone's attention. The training begins now. Addressing a specific group of Saiyans, he informs they are the fifth squad. Remember that number well. They already know the three admirals standing beside him. Admiral Ruba, okay. known for being the most powerful man on the planet. Admiral Lariak, an experienced strategist and bold warrior. The man okay. who has won battles without ever mobilizing a single soldier. Third, Admiral Fennel. The best Haku? of the best in tactical fighting Sorry, and private no. investigation. She has successfully dismantled 182 smuggling rings. Vegeta warns if they are wise. Nobody should ever try to hide anything Crazy how Goku her. locked up. You see all this motion? All, the, all this happens because my dog locked up. Oh, this is All of this motion because, hey, yo, we got to free my nigga, bro. Like this is this is this is this is the motion, bro. And when that nigga Goku get free, I swear to God, there's only four letters that can describe that moment. When that nigga Goku get free, there's only four letters that can describe what the fuck gonna go down, bro. Man, free Goku, free big Goku, tell us backwards. The prince instructs the rest of his soldiers to make four mixed groups. Each group will go in front of one of the admirals or himself. Upon asking if he makes himself clear, hundreds of voices chant back, yes, sir. Amping him up, Vegeta bellows, he didn't hear him. Has he been clear? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're <laughs> smirking. He thinks he's really going to enjoy this job. Type shit. However, his wife and Jocko have to scoff at him. Boma comments how big-headed this is going to get him. The spaceman couldn't agree more. Where's the love trio? That's when in the crowd, Khalifa wails on a random soldier while scolding to know what he's looking at. Oh my god, hello. Spotting this, Vegeta clenches his jaw at the sight that she's already acting up. He has no idea how to deal with her. He's going to have to be smart. Pair with Broly. He calls out to her, instructing she make her way to Ruba's group. But what? She thought they would get to choose their own groups going Super Saiyan and grabbing her by the hair. He screams at her not to argue with him. Oh, shit. This causes Ruba to butt in. He tells Vegeta it would be better if he refrained from using that form. Turning back to him, he scowls if he heard him right. Who allowed him to address him by name? Oh, dozens of murmurs break out in the crowd. Are they going to fight? How dare he talk to their admiral like that? If they do fight, one will be supporting Ruba, and so on. Fennel calls out for all the Saiyans to be quiet. What are those whisperings for? Lariak objects. Does she realize the lack of respect Vegeta is showing? But that's not the point. Reacting like that isn't appropriate for a proper Saiyan soldier. Such behavior is unworthy of them as leaders. Although, if this Vegeta has an issue with them, what? Ruba puffs out his chest and tells Vegeta that now he has two issues if he has a problem being addressed by name. Oh, Aside shit. from the king, everyone is skeptical about his ability to lead him. Oh. Oh, you want to test Big G's? Okay. I bet. Okay. 
But what is this? Now they're having doubts about his legitimacy? Looking into the crowd, the entire Saiyan army appears to be staring him down. Oh yeah, this about to get bad. Oh, it is about to get bad for y'all. a giant fight is about to break out. Kaba tries to be the mediator of peace. Nah. He calls for everyone to calm down. I'm not gonna lie, Vegeta crash out, bro. They will find a compromise. Nah. He'll backing him up on this. Prove some real quick. But Vegeta screeches for silence. Pre it prove seems some real quick. They've forgotten who they're talking to. He is Vegeta. Powering up to Super Saiyan Blue, he tells every single one of them to come at him. With the training of the Saiyans more or less beginning, what will happen to Son Goku, or Universe Zero, the Angels, and Gods of Destruction? Among other issues, will Gohan live up to the Pride Troopers' expectations? And perhaps most surprising of all... Videl! Look! I'm flying! What about Videl? No, but seriously, if Hercule gets shined, <laughs> I'm there, nigga. Hercule and Videl... Please enter this story. Please, that's what we need. If Mr. Satan, the world champ, actually move shit, boy. Oh, my God. Take care and stay blessed. We're breezing through. Kakumai, Kakazume, Kakulululu, whatever. Take care and stay blessed. Comment below. Are you team Chila or team, uh, uh, what's, what's her name? Kale. If you was Broly, what you, what you sliding for? Because apparently all y'all some goddamn freaks. <laughs> but nothing hurts with a little love triangle. Okay. No